have with me now is Peter Logan, um, who recalls when the bombs dropped uh, in Leeton in May 1941. So Peter, you, you were a young lad. I was uh, nearly six, six, yes. You were nearly six years of age. What, yeah. what area of town did you live? To, well, in Iron Lane, uh, yeah. to 234, which was just past where St Nicholas Park uh, Drive goes up, yeah. Iron Lane now. So um, uh, the bomb landed um, four, four doors up from us in the, the middle of the road and uh, it, it did a significant damage around. Um, we lost all, virtually all of our roof, all the windows in the house, um, apart from the room we, we were in when we dived under the table to, because we could hear the bomb coming down. And, um, and then um, the front door was blasted down the hall um, and um, so the house was significantly um, damaged and uh, I remember the, uh, the ARP people, the air raid wardens coming in, Jack Pegg who was the um, manager of Camel's Jewellers on Bridge Street in the Neaton, yeah. and Percy Allen who was our next door neighbour and a Mr Thompson who was just, uh, lived just up the road as well. And, um, they came in and asking, if, shouting if anybody was there, and the mother said, yes, we're here, we're all okay. And then Jack Pegg took us down to his house to um, and stayed the rest of the night. Um, <coughs> there was an, an, another bomb in uh, Hyme Lane, which landed in the garden of 330, and um, that um, blasted the hall. The, the, the front door and the man who lived there who was the librarian and they came down the hall and he had um, injuries which might cause him to limp and use a stick afterwards I can remember but I also um, remember going to uh, see the, the huge bomb crater in, uh, in between um, Kingsbridge Road, Champlain Drive and, um, uh, and um, Knighton Road um, in fact, the boy who I was uh, sitting next to at school, he and his family were in an Anderson shelter on the lip of the crater, which was, that was a absolutely flat. I think I've got country. a photo of that. Yeah, and um, uh, all the family were killed, so the teacher told us the next time we were at school the next week uh, what had happened and um, that he wouldn't be with us anymore. So um, we went to uh, some of my friends and I went to see that crater because it was supposed to be the biggest bomb that landed in the, in the Midlands and um, I can remember a huge hole and saw this Anderson shelter which had been severely damaged and uh, the houses all around had uh, immense damage to their roofs because of all, all the debris that was um, thrown up from the, from the crater. I also remember um, seeing a house in Venter Street which um, had uh, a huge crack in, in the side wall and you could see into the pantry and there was uh, tins of fruit that was yeah. in there at the time. Um, I can also remember going into um, St Nicholas Parish Church after that had been damaged. Um, there was some damage up above the altar to the windows and that and all, nearly all the windows had been uh, Blown out, blown out. So, so all the coloured glass had gone, and um, and that's and I, I can remember looking down um, uh, Church Street towards Bon, bon Gay, and the houses all down there, which is where the temporary sh supposedly temporary shops are opposite yeah. the uh, yeah. opposite the library, and there was a utter devastation. I, I believe there was a. I think it was the lawyer Dempsey. Yeah, lawyer Dempster. Yeah. Dem Dempster and uh, Nelly. Oh, oh, yeah, Nelly. I, I can't. Rem I don't know about him, but I, I can remember somebody saying about it, lawyer Dem Dempster. Yeah, it? yeah. And um, I, uh, there was a house also just opposite the churchyard that was um, eventually knocked down as well. I can remember that damage. So, but um, the wartime as a boy of my age, I mean. I used to play with some boys of my own age and the brother was nearly five years older than me and um, there were quite several of his friends as well and we used to go out as a group, play as a group sort of thing and uh, um, 
it was quite a good fun in some ways because after a bombing raid we used to go around the field looking for craters and yeah. uh, there were quite a few uh, craters which formed ponds and uh, which are still there now you know oh, right. yeah. but um, yeah uh, but obviously they were after Nuneaton railway station which was a main line station in those days and nearly all the sort of munitions from Coventry came through Nuneaton station yeah. Yeah. so that's what, what they were after but um, with the in, uh, inaccuracies in bombing in those days you know they could go anywhere so but um, <coughs> yeah I mean we, we, we found um, a case which had contained uh, 16 um, incendiary bombs but obviously it had been jettisoned from the, from the plane we found that and uh, we used to find bits of uh, incendiary bombs and in fact some lads in Weddington had got got one that hadn't gone off, so oh. um, you know was sort of walking around with it and that. So, but, um, yeah. So I have some quite vivid memories of the, of the war and the bombing, and um, some good memories as well in some ways. But uh, yeah. um, I mean, as far as the damage to the house was concerned, my father, who had just been posted up to the York Aerodrome, he got a Douglas motorbike and sidecar and, and he heard about a Midlands town being bombed and he, he just sort of thought I've got to get home and he managed to get a pass for the weekend and came down and anyway um, I can remember going back with him with my mother and my brother went to stay with my auntie but we went to York and stayed up there in these digs and um, I can remember walking round the wall in York, oh, yeah. and it's also wall, going yeah. in the cathedral there and seeing all these little flags at the top of the coats of arms of various yeah. people, and um, and that. So, and then, <coughs> you know, the uh, I can't remember how long the repairs took, but it did take an age, I can assure you. Yeah. And we finished up with all this horrible glass, which you couldn't see through very yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I mean, they are very vivid memories. And, oh yeah. Um, yeah. Upsetting memories, really. Um, but when you sit and think about it, but can, can you still hear uh, the, the bombs, or, or can you still hear the sound of the bombs dropping all these years after? Yeah, you, you, you could hear the whistle of, yeah. of the bomb coming down, and um, I mean, obviously, my mother realised what it what what it was, and. Uh, reacted immediately yeah. otherwise we could have been severely injured if not killed yeah. so yeah so um, anyway uh, you know we got through it and uh, as you had to do and yeah. um, of course uh, so the end of the war came and you didn't even yeah. celebrate it can yes. you remember yeah we, we had a celebration we had a VE day and um, uh, there was a party up in um, uh, on this piece of land actually um, that uh, was between 2.92 and 3.30 um, and um, I, can, I remember having a bonfire there and uh, a few fireworks, I don't know where they came from but, um, but somebody provided them and that and I remember somebody had got some um, magnesium filings or something and threw those on and there were sparks oh, everywhere from yeah. that, you know so um, yeah, I can remember it to some extent, yeah, yeah. but I, I wasn't that old really so no. No. It's amazing how well you remember these things, you know. It is. It's been brilliant talking to you, Peter. Oh, it really has, yeah. and, and hopefully, you know, people who are, are watching and, and yeah. listening to this will will also have some memories of themselves evoked yeah. by what you yeah. all said. Um, and you know, if if anyone has got any memories that they'd like to share with us mm. of when the bombs dropped, please do get in touch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.